All right, guys, welcome back to the new subscriber game. Uh, not so new anymore. Been trying to remember to, to come over here to show you. It is day 14. Um, just turned. So morale has sort of uh, reestablished itself here. You can see we are now um, almost all the way to the top and on into Western Africa here. So we're definitely swarming like maniacs. I'm loving it. Um, morale is an issue. There's just no question about it. Morale is painful. And also, you know, you can see, um, honestly, like I've only captured, gosh, I want to say like 10 or 12 territories, you know, I'm just spending so much time on the road <laughs> going North, but you know what? I'm hanging in there just to see what happens. We've talked about this many times on all these videos that like, we're definitely giving up some strength in terms of morale will hurt us. Um, we're giving up some quick invasion because we're having to move further. But what we're giving up in those terms, I think should be more than made up for just in terms of raw swarmage. Like we're just, we're just absolutely uh, just dominating the African continent here at this point. So I'm loving it. You know, I don't care. Um, I've definitely, I've grabbed all my guys from all along here and, and they're all moving to the front here. I did notice a little bit of um, South Angola looked like he's maybe struggling just a little bit. This is an unfair fight here. Um, well, as long as he stays in his fort, he'll be just fine. Yeah, so where are you going, buddy? Are you moving in? He's moving in against a fort with, with a bunch of people in the fort too. Ouch. So uh, it's a level one fort. That's all it needs to be with that many guys inside of it. Gosh. So, Never mind. Um, I was sending this 42 down to stiffen that, but I didn't see that there was a fort under there. And I didn't see that that this doofus is attacking into the fort. So I don't need to do that at all. I'm not going to do that. Let me rethink my entire plans now. Um, it's time to keep on conquering, I guess. God, we're going to be so unpopular by the end of this. Let me see what my, it's probably already pretty low. 46%. That's not terrible. I've I've had popularity in the single digits because I'm a conquering fool. All right. So that does change things just a little bit. Um, there's no fort here. So that means it is fortuitous. <laughs> okay. Um, and I'll go ahead and take this too. Yeah. What the heck? Why not? So the way I'll manage this is the way I have in the past, which is go ahead and attack and then, um, yeah, look at that morale. These guys are probably about 65% strength in terms of their, uh, you know, fighting ability. That really sucks. It's not great. I don't know what to say, guys. You know, really just don't. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and split off some of them. I'll split off half of them and rush them there. So uh, this is how I can get them there at two different times and set them to, oh, come on, really? Normally, once you attack it, okay, so it comes over to here and force march them. All right, that'll keep those two step uh, stacks separate. The eight will hit first, and then uh, let's see how much longer. Three hours and 23, and this one is five hours. Okay, so an hour and a half later, the seven will, will hit. By then, um, the eight will have a couple cycles of attacks, and then the reinforcements will come in. So, all right, I love it. Um, send it all 42 in here, not not gonna mess around at all. Um, and then I can deal with this fort later. I do have some cannons from down south. Speaking of which, um, I did pick up a double oil, super stoked about it. Picked up a double wheat, super stoked about that. And all the way down here, I still have my previous um, double oil, which I'm loving. I'm, I'm building that up and I have a tank developing there. I really need to build up another level, but I'm just running out of material at this point. I'll wait till that replenishes a little bit. Um, uh, you know what? I can do some horse trading off camera here. I'm going to sell some wheat, sell some fish and, uh, and go ahead and, and keep my factories building. I am pretty happy. Um, I've mentioned this in the past. If you have factories, there should be stuff developing in it. Um, if you've got empty factories, that means that you've overbuilt factories. My rule of thumb, as always, is just if you just build factories only on your double tiles, um, typically that keeps it about balanced. It just it seems to do a good job. Just you can add them if you need them or whatever. But uh, 
But typically, as you conquer along, I believe I've got mm, five now, five double tiles. So I've got five factories up and running. I'm about to probably take a couple more as I invade northward. I'd like to get this double iron. Um, we'll see what happens. But uh, hey, the game's going good. I'm loving seeing everybody here. Um, it looks like everybody's getting along. I was really concerned about that. I know that um, at times when everybody's just swarming north, I mean, the general rule of thumb is that we're just all take what you can get is what I say. Take what you can get. Um, but there, there are times when you're trying to get a territory and somebody else comes in and it feels like they sniped it out from under you. And uh, I always just try to give the benefit of the doubt. I'm like, you know what? Just give them the benefit of the doubt. And because uh, we're all just going for territories. And then if it, if it seems to happen repeatedly, then again, that that little thing of like, hey, um, I was hoping to get that, you know, here's like, I'm old enough now to know how to communicate with people without you know, causing grief. And so here's the number one thing that people do wrong is they, when they communicate to somebody, they say, why are you trying to do this? Why are you trying to snipe my blah, blah, blah. So see what that does when you do that to somebody, you're assuming that you know what's in their brain. You're, you're, it's called mind reading and it's an awful thing to do because it doesn't solve any problems. It doesn't solve your problem. It doesn't solve, uh, you know, the issue at hand, nothing gets solved. You just piss the person off. So instead of coming at it like that, um, like saying, you know, um, well, I noticed that you're trying to blah, blah, blah. Well, no, I don't know what they're trying to do. Right. I'm not the expert on what's going on in their head. They are. And so when you come at somebody with this, it's, it's called mind reading, telling somebody else what they're trying to do, um, it almost always fails in terms of if you're trying to communicate to, to get a favorable outcome, don't do that. Don't come at somebody mind reading them, telling them what they're all about, what they're trying to do to you. Instead, reverse it. Completely just say, hey, man, I was really hoping to get that, uh, that double wheat I'm, I'm super starved for foodstuffs right now. Do you think you could help me? So what you do is instead of, instead of like uh, setting somebody up to get defensive, right? Immediately just attacking them and attacking their character, right? Telling them what they, what they're thinking and what their motivations are. Just never, ever do that. Just come at the situation, come at the problem from the part that you know, and the part that you know is you and what you'd like to have for your game. And hey, we're all swarming up together. I noticed you got the last couple territories. Would you mind if I got this one over here? Um, it would really help my game. And uh, I've also heard communications experts talking about this too, that when you appeal for help, hey, do you think you could help me out? Um, it shifts the entire conversation. So instead of me coming at you, attacking you, what do you think you're doing? Why are you trying to do this to me? You know, uh, attacking your motivations, attacking your honor, um, instead of that, I'm just straight up going, hey, can you help me out? And it just, it, it, it changes the whole thing. So I was a little concerned that there would be some of that. Um, I think there was one thing that got said, and it wasn't even that big of a deal. It's like, um, this group is very mature, and I haven't seen, like, I got to say, like, haven't seen any butthurt at all. Um, you know, we're all just kind of getting what we can get. I think, I think you all see, like, I'm the leader of the coalition, and I've got, like, I've picked up like 10 territories, right? And I'm not crying about it. It is just, it, that's the way this is going to go. Um, I have 24. So I picked up 14 territories from my original 10. Unless we started with eight. I can't remember. Maybe we started with eight. But anyway, I, I, I'm not swimming in the territories, so to speak. Um, I think Benaya started off in a really good place. He started, at, and I think he just, because he's smart, <laughs> he already knew. He's like, so he's not going to start down here. He's going to start here where he can really expand and be a, a serious power up here. You can see he's already bigger than most of us. Um, haven't looked at the count here, but uh, 25. Yeah, so that, I guess, what was mine? 22? I can't remember. But anyway, um, but still, he's in a real good position to continue to expand. And again, you know, he doesn't have to run his men for 12 hours to get to that front. He's just developing, you know, in his own home territory. So that was good placement. That was wise placement on his behalf. Um, but all right, let's just let's just keep going, see what happens. I thought I was needed over here to help out, but I'm not. I'm not needed. Uh, I can't remember if I sent. Yeah, I was sending some people over here to help him, but um, is this a is this a fort? 
Yeah, he's building that up to a level one fort. So there's really no danger over here. And he can run in those six. Okay, so I'm going to mind my own business. I kind of thought maybe he needed some assistance, but I'm thinking now, nope. So one of the things I have been loving about this game, let's take them all the way up to here, um, is I've been having fun with the cavalry. I like the cavalry. You know, they're just, they're fast. I could run them up from all the way backfield. Now, I've been using the territories where I, I was building my cavalry. You can see there's a few on route here. Um, I now have building cannon because I need them building cannon. So I've, I've paused the cavalry development temporarily, but I think what I'll do is I'll probably use my forward factories to make my artillery because artillery are so slow and then just keep building cavalry in the backfield. So if you haven't gone to my cavalry only playlist, go check it out because it's fun. It's the game where I, I said I'm only going to build cavalry and I allowed myself to build artillery. Because at the time, I thought there's no way you can win a game without artillery. Well, if you watch that playlist, you'll see, like, I'm already winning the game, like, hard by the time cavalry are even, a, I'm, I'm sorry, artillery are even an option. So, like, just that early, heavy cavalry production. And I made sure that I had a, I think I was playing Russia or something during that game. But I had one that had a lot of wheat, a lot of food. Because, you know, cavalry, of course, you have to have the barracks. And, uh, and then they do have an upkeep. The cavalry have that upkeep of wheat as well. So um, let's just check out the cavalry here. Love me. Love me the cavalry. So they're, yeah, daily upkeep of grain and fish. So you want that food stuff so if you're going to build these guys. But they're fast, right? 48 kilometers per hour. Um, and so, you know, twice as fast. Well, not not twice as fast. Isn't that strange? Well, I'm, I'm being educated here. Um, I thought it was... I thought it was twice as fast. Now, am I thinking armored car? Uh, let's go and just check out real quick armored car and see uh, what its speed is. 72. Oh, my God. Okay, so I'm learning something myself here. I always thought armored cars and cavalry were the same speed. Wow. I am a doofus. Hey, something else I just learned, too, which I think I want to do um, a tips and tactics video on is how good against airplanes these cars are. Look at that. 1.6 is, is great. Like I think a tank, a tank is is not much more than that. If it is, yeah, it's point, point 0.4. A tank defends against air at point 0.4. So 1.6, four times the defensive power as a tank? Like, wow. So it's time to stack armored cars. We also talked about... Um, Balloons, you know, balloons stack with your regular infantry. So they all appear in that same little rectangular white window together. And these guys have 1.5 against the air. So that's pretty good too. And um, I believe, yeah, they're cheaper to build than these um, oil and steel hogs, right? So if you're short on oil and steel, you can still come over and start to stack your um your infantry with air defense. So I think that's really cool. I, I'm always looking for options against air. Air can be really devastating in the, in the mid and late game. The stack of bombers comes up on you and you don't have anything to defend with. It's it, you know, it's, it's, it's curtains, you know? So having that stack of armored cars, that'd be pretty cool. So I did learn something here, guys. I'm glad, I'm glad we looked at that. So I thought cavalry we're just as fast as armored cars, and they are not. Um, they certainly are not. And that's really unfortunate because that, that really kind of cuts down on their uh, capabilities. Um, not 72, but 48. So they're 50% faster than your 36 infantry. So they are faster, uh, but not twice as fast, right? Only half again as fast. So um, that's a little disappointing. But uh, hey, they're still fast. I do still like them. And they pack that punch. You know, look at that. Offensively, 2.6. Not bad at all. Not bad whatsoever. All right, so that's it, guys. Um, not really much else to say. Um, you can see we're continuing to swarm northwards. Keep up the good work, boys. I'm liking what I'm seeing. Um, I'm not casting these videos as often anymore because there's really not a whole lot going on. Um, it's kind of more of the same until we start to bump up against um, some real threats as we move further north and, of course, into Europe. So we'll see what develops along those lines. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and check our newspaper and see where we stand. Uh, as a coalition, we are in second place. All right. Second place behind Europe 
European, man. I'm telling you, next next game we play, next game I cast with subscribers, we're going to start in Europe. There's just no question about it. The density of materials, the density of, of uh, countries is just choice. So we'll, we'll go for that one next. Um, let's go ahead and do come and check the uh, province count. I'm big on the province count here. And we are significantly behind on the province count. Okay, behind both New World Order and European Union. Again, that's that's a feature of us starting so far south and having to walk. Now, keep it in mind, too, that we do have, what, four or five uh, non-aggression brothers in here who, if we counted their territories, would put us over the top. So, again, it's it's that give and take. Um, I, I've, I've talked to enough people, had enough people chime in. The next subscriber game is not going to be like this. Um, the next subscriber game, we're going to go with the core seven. And then I'm going to ask for maybe two or three alternates. Um, and, and I'll write their name down because I, I want them to be able to join other coalitions if they need to for self-defense. But we'll talk about it all in the, in the very first video. Um, I'll release a video that has the game ID number on it. And we'll talk about that exact thing. But I, I, I'm thinking what we're going to do is we're going to start in Europe. And I'm going to uh, come on with an early, early one, you know, like try to get this 500 game on day one. And um, I'm going to accept the first six uh, members just straight up in order of entry. Um, I do think I'm going to keep uh, I'm going to keep one open for Papa. Man, I can't remember his name. Papa something I, on YouTube. Um, he wants to play Italy. And he, he really seems to know his stuff. So I'm looking forward to that. I'd also really like to, I, I'd like to say, like, I, I don't mean to be playing favorites, but because I'm not. But what I'm saying is that um, Benaya here is just, he's active on the channel. He comments a lot on the videos. So uh, it's not that I'm playing favorites. I promise you, I'm not. Um, but when, when somebody is that active on the channel and he's always throwing in advice and, and uh, wisdom about the game, um, that's when I got to say, okay, I'm going to hold, uh, these guys a place. So, um, 50 caliber possibly as well, but you know, for the most part, I don't want to hold many places. I think maybe just one or two. Um, and then everyone else, it's just a matter of get on there, you know? And, uh, so I, I'm not sure when that's going to happen. I did end my, another 500 stack. I'm done with that one. Um, once the guy let one, one of my, one of my coalition mates, let our main enemy right of way through his territories and he killed a stack of mine and this was after my other new uh new coalition mate from asia had let a different stack traverse across his land and kill my entire air force and so uh really moving forward we're going to stick with the subscribers because you cannot trust uh these random people out there honestly all right so um that's about all there is to it keep up the good work boys keep on swarming north um i love to see those rivers of blue and white moving uh northward and uh and we'll just continue to conquer that's all there is to it um i've, I've already got two more territories i'm moving towards right now and it looks like i'll be going to war with this guy right here which i'm going to go ahead and do right now because if you declare war, of course, it's less of a, I did not even look to see what it is, um, Southwest Niger. Okay, so uh, yeah, so if you declare war, it's less of a penalty to your popularity. So Southwest Niger. Okay, yeah, it's usually highlighted, but I, you know, when you're declaring war on someone, you wanna make absolutely sure you're not declaring war on the wrong person. So there we go. Um, that will hurt my popularity just a little bit, um, but not as much as a sneak attack, which is what happens when you just attack without declaring more. So a little bit better for your overall game there. All right, that's it, guys. Um, thanks for checking in. I'll see you all next time. Adios, amigos.